Hi, my name is Beth and I'm the sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a 3D style face mask. This is a pretty cool design and it's not something that I invented by any means. You'll be able to find a lot of tutorials and videos for this face mask. But as I was watching them and testing them out, I kind of felt like a lot of the tutorials weren't that efficient. So I developed my own method of construction or process for making these face masks so it's as fast as possible. I know I'm super late to the game with doing a face mask tutorial. We've been in quarantine pandemic for about eight months, but in the beginning, I just really didn't want to spend my time sewing masks and I still really don't. So I really wanna find mask patterns that work well, give you a great result and are super, super fast. So I made a few masks back at the beginning in March and did some for myself and friends and family and then have not done anything since then. But now that we've been in it for a while and those masks have been washed a bunch of times, they're kind of showing some wear and tear. So I'm really excited to refresh my stash of masks with this 3D style. So you can see the mask is really kind of built so it will cup your face really nicely and has a little piece of bias tape at the top so you can put in metal and create a fitted nose bridge and there's a casing on the side so you can put in elastic or cord or whatever you have on hand and you can replace it as needed. Also if you decide that the length of elastic is not tight enough you can easily just tie it tighter. So this is a really great project for using up scrap fabric. Obviously I used some fabric left over from a dress that I made. So it's really fun because I can have a little matching coordinating outfit, but also just use things that I have on hand. I recommend using kind of a medium weight, tightly woven fabric. I read that a good test for fabric that's good for masks is if you blow through it like and you can't feel your breath on the other side, then it should be a good mask for protecting you from the pandemic. So I built my own template for this. There are a ton of templates out there. Um, if this size doesn't work for you, feel free to adopt it. And if you don't wanna make your own, go over to my blog. I have a link down in the show notes and you can download this template to print it on cardstock from your home printer. So again, it's a really cool design. I really like it. And I'm going to show, to show you how to make it as quickly as possible. To make these masks, you want to make two templates. The first one is for the body of the mask and you'll cut a rectangle 10 inches by seven inches. Then you want to cut off each corner and you'll find the corner by measuring two inches and two inches into the rectangle and then cut it off. For each mask, you'll need to cut two of the fabric. You'll also want to make a folding template that's nine and a half inches long by three inches high. Finally, if you want to have a nose bridge in your mask, cut a piece of bias tape that's about three inches long. Here I have my two pieces of fabric right sides together. I'm going to stitch around the edge, pivoting at the corners, and I'll leave an opening at the top that's about three inches long. I'm using a straight stitch and a one quarter inch seam allowance. All right, let's head over to the pressing station. We want to trim off each corner of our fabric, but don't cut through the stitching. Just do a quick little clip across the corner. Then turn your mask right side out through the opening. Push it as much as you can gently with your fingers. Then to get the corners really pushed out, gently use something like a knitting needle to push them just to push the fabric into that corner that we stitched. Now let's just give this a good press. So here where we have the opening, tuck the fabric in one quarter inch and press that as well. 
So my opening is right here, and this is the wrong side of my mask. Grab your folding template and center the template on your mask. Then you'll want to fold your fabric over the template and press this edge. I just slide the template out so that I'm not getting it damaged with the steam and do the same for the other side. If you want to add a nose bridge to your mask, get your little piece of bias tape and press in the short ends. So the opening in our mask is the top and I'm just going to center my little piece of bias tape on the mask, aligning the edge of the bias tape with the edge of the mask. And I will hold this in place. All right, now we're ready to top stitch. Let's head over to the sewing machine. For the fastest mask, you can just stitch right along here to close up the opening. And then if you're also doing the nose bridge, make sure to stitch down this end too. I'm gonna go ahead and do as much top stitching as possible. I'm gonna start right here at the top and just stitch about 1 8 of an inch from the edge. Then connect with where you started and do a little bit of a back stitch. Cut those threads and now we want to stitch down this other side of the nose bridge. Now this is optional, but I think that it might help keep the mask standing away from your face a little bit. I'm going to top stitch right down next to this folded edge. And again, just make this top stitching as narrow as possible. Okay, and then we'll repeat for this side. Now we want to fold in the end 5 eighths of an inch and you're just going to overlap those flaps. You can use a little ruler to measure that it's about 5 eighths of an inch and then hold it with a pin or wonder clip. Now I'm going to top stitch right along where I already top stitched before. repeat on this side. This fold makes the casing for the elastic or ribbon that's going to go around your ears to hold the mask on your face. This is the final step and this makes the mask 3D. You're going to unfold the flap and fold it so the corner matches the edge of the front of the mask. Then just pin that in place. Do the same over here. Just kind of fold it back as much as it goes. This time the corner's not hitting the end. So that's probably due to a lack of accuracy on my part, but that's okay. Now we'll just top stitch that right down. Same on the other side. Okay, so here's the inside of our mask and the outside. It's nice 3D shape with a little pocket for a nose bridge and casings that you'll put elastic through. Final step is to put elastic or ribbon through the casings on the side. And I've cut a piece of elastic that's about 11 and a half inches. And then I'm using a bodkin. You could also use a safety pin. Just put it through the end of the elastic and then thread it through this casing at the end. Okay, then you can just tie these in a knot or if you wish, you could overlap them and stitch them together. So you'll do the same on both sides. 
And then if you've done the little nose bridge, you can put a piece of wire or a special piece of metal that's designed for these nose bridges and that'll give a little more definition to the mask. And just remember to take it out before you wash it. So this video is the second in my series of using scraps to make holiday gifts. And I do think that masks would make a really great holiday gift. It really shows the people you love that you care about them and care about their health. And plus they get a like really beautiful, reusable mask that they can wear every day. If you sew a lot and have a ton of scraps, this is my second video in a series of using scraps to make holiday gifts. Last week, I showed you how to make mitered corner napkins. I'll put a link in here. And I'm also working on developing an e-course that shows you how to make improvisational quilts using your fabric scraps. It's a course designed really for garment sewists, so people who have a lot of scraps around and are looking for things to do with it. I'll put a link down in the show notes to sign up for my newsletter that's all about sustainability and sewing, and it'll be the best place to learn when that course launches. And if you enjoyed this tutorial and the free content on this channel and you want to support the channel, I have links down in the show notes so you can buy me a coffee or visit the pattern shop. And as always, I would be so honored if you subscribe to my channel by hitting the button below and then hit the bell to be notified every time I release a new video. Happy sewing! Wow.